Take your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, the first three verses, very familiar passage of Scripture. We've heard it a lot. We've, we've read it a lot. Uh, I've preached out of this passage a few times, um, but I, I just want to read it again, and I, I come across a, a different heartfelt thought about it this time that I've never had before. And um, I think that's one of the things I love about the Word of God, that when the Word of God is received or read and, it's re- and there's a hunger there to receive something, He's going to say what needs to be said even if you've read it many times before. So I heard it in this way. It's uh, Isaiah chapter 61, uh, verse 1 through 3. You can see some of this same passage of Scripture in, in the book of Luke where Jesus went into the temple the first time uh, and when he first come in and he, he proclaimed, he read out of the book of Isaiah and this is what he read. So this is the Spirit of the Lord as it moved upon Isaiah. This is the account of Isaiah, what he heard the Lord say to him. Jesus, in, in turn, in the book of Luke, said almost the same thing. He, he used a little bit different He stopped a little shorter than what Isaiah the prophet did. But what I'm trying to get across to us is this, is that it's not me that's speaking. It wasn't Isaiah that was speaking. It was the Spirit of the Lord that was speaking. So when the Spirit of the Lord begins to speak, because of what Jesus did for us on Calvary and then rose again and then sent back the Holy Ghost for us to lead and guide us, We can put our name there. We can read this to where it says, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon, put your hand like this, say me. It's not just talking about Isaiah. Jesus wasn't just speaking of himself. But he's now addressing the church. The Spirit of the Lord is upon, come on, me. Say it, me. Say my name. Say, say your name. You know, don't do the Spirit of the Lord is say your name. The Spirit of the Lord is on Wes. The Spirit of the Lord is on Larry. The, y- are y'all listening to me this morning? Uh, the, so he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Oh, that the Spirit of God would fall on every one of us in a major way in this room this morning. You say, well, pastor, he's here. I know that. The presence is here. Got that. But for him, to us to be able to say in an individual setting, uh, personally like this, to where we say, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. How many knows that when the Spirit of God is upon you, that you become a different person. You become a different being. You become somebody that's not weak and unable, but somebody that's powerful and appointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon... Come on, say it again. I want you to leave out of this room today knowing that the Spirit of the Lord is on you. I want you to leave out of this room today with a confidence that you're not walking by yourself and not with just a sense of accountability. I Don't get me wrong. I love the accountability that the Holy Ghost provides for me. I love the accountability that when my, I start looking at something or doing something and the Holy Spirit says, hold up. Whenever I read some ridiculous post and this, and this answer comes to me real quick and I know that I could, I could, I could whip this out real fast in the Holy, and I type it and the Holy Spirit says, what are you doing? That's when the, we can say that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Whenever what my natural body, my natural man would want to do, then that which is inside of me stands up and opposes my own spirit, stands up and opposes the spirit of the devil, stands up and opposes the spirit of oppression and depression. Are y'all listening to me this morning? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. (laughs) 
I'll be honest enough to tell you that other spirits try to jump on us too. There's other voices that, that, that uh, uh, they, they try to take their place in our thought, our minds, our wills that become action. Somebody say, but the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now watch this. It's not enough that God just directs the Holy Spirit to begin uh, this man to feel this and hear the word of the Lord in his heart and spirit to the point that he begins to say it. But he gives him reason why. Look at the next word. Because. Somebody say because. God's always got a cause. He's never just shooting in the dark. He never just leads us to do something because he's bored. But he's looking for a man. He's looking for a woman, for a boy or a girl that will stand up and say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he goes on to say, because the Lord has what? Anointed me. I'm going to stop right there. How many knows what it's like to have the anointing of the Spirit of God on your life? Come on, I'm not going to leave this till, till I make this point. There's been times that you've all tried to do something on your own. There's been times that you've been forced to navigate waters that's unknown to you, that you have never been that way before. But I'm here to declare to you today that God never leaves us alone. He never intended for us to do this alone. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. That's what all our churches need today is for the Spirit of God to come upon us and completely set us aside with our agenda, with what we think we're here to do, and let the Spirit of God lead, guide, pull us along, work with, work for, work through. Every now and then somebody remind me to breathe. I'm just saying... That there is a divine purpose upon the church. I'm just saying that there's a divine purpose on your life. I'm just saying that God has anointed you for a reason. How many times more than not do we not feel like that the Lord's even aware of me? How many times more than not are we not aware of the fact that the Spirit of the Lord is not only aware of us, but He has placed Himself within us? How many times have we not been able to see that God has chosen you? God has chosen you and 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 y'all to do a specific work for the kingdom of God for the purpose of His kingdom, for the purpose of people's salvation, for the purpose of people's deliverance, for the purpose of God bringing a church, bringing a people that the Scripture says in the book of Peter, you once were not even a people, but now because of what I've done for you, you are a people. What? Of God. Come on, somebody. And he says this, he said that that he has anointed me He has anointed the church. He has anointed us. Put your hand on your chest and say, the, the Spirit of God is talking to me. If you come across somebody that they need prayer or they need some special attention, it's all right if you call the church and talk to pastor. But has it ever crossed your mind that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you? That the Spirit of the Lord has anointed you? Somebody say, He sent me. If we wait for pastors 
to do everything. There's not enough of us to go around. There's not enough time to go around. There's not enough ability for a few people to do. It takes the church. Somebody say, that's me. He's anointed me to do what? Number one, to preach good tidings to the poor. How long has it been since you have invested yourself in the life of somebody else that was less fortunate than you? But you see, the enemy has conditioned us through political ways and through what's going on in our country and the fact that you can't drive up to a red light without a poor soul standing there panhandling, needing, asking for donations and stuff. And the, the enemy has used that in such a way to create doubt in our mind and, and ridicule in our mind. And we begin to judge other things and judge other people and, and whatnot. And the fact is, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent in the eyes of the world, the Scripture said that He has anointed me to, to say the, to the poor, to reach them. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Am I talking to any victims in this room today? That you're not certain if you survived the crash of a broken relationship or not yet. That you survived the crash of a, a disappointment that come your way that you hoped you would never have to deal with. That you survived different things that you pray that you wouldn't place on your worst enemy. Am I talking to anybody in here? that's have absolutely had a heart that was broken and just laid in pieces. Wasn't certain that you had the ability, that anybody had the ability. It, you're not certain that if you can overcome this or not. You don't know if you can survive this crash or not. You've even said and whispered to the Lord, Lord, I don't know if I can take this or not. I'm just trying to be real this morning. I'm just trying to let us all know that we're all in the same boat. We're none of us above each other. None of us are better than one another. We are all in the same boat. We have all been broken hearted at times. We've all needed healing at times. But yet we have all been appointed by the Lord God Most High and anointed to heal, to speak, to preach, to talk, to minister. Somebody say, I think he's talking about me. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Can I dig that a little deeper? You know, sometimes we look at people that are struggling and suffering, and we can tell they're brokenhearted. But if we're not careful, we won't go into the mode of that he's appointed me and he's anointed me. We'll go into that other mode. Well, if they had quit doing that, maybe they wouldn't get their heart broke so much. Yeah. Well, if they would have handled that differently, maybe they wouldn't be in that situation. But nowhere in the Scripture does God give us permission to sit in the seat that He sits in. He didn't even give us the right to sit in the seat of the scornful. Elbow your neighbor and say, you got to be careful where you sit. And I, I just want to stop and say a couple of things. I was met twice this morning by two different people of this church that said God did an absolute miracle in their life this week. Can we give Him some praise for that? And the other thing is, is that I don't know how I got where I'm at right now. This wasn't where I was planning for this to go, but it's, it's, it feels good to me and it seems good to the Holy Ghost. I'm going to do it. To preach, 
He's anointed me to heal. He's anointed me to prophesy. Look at that next word. To proclaim. To speak forth. Can I drive this a moment? He has ordered me to proclaim liberty to the captives. What does that look like? That looks like sometimes when you've been dealing with somebody, maybe it's a child, maybe it's a, a sibling, maybe it's, it's a, a person, or your, your spouse, somebody that's close to you, maybe a co-worker or something of that nature, and they're bound. How many know somebody that is bound? They can't, they'd like to do different. They try to do different. They make efforts at being different. They, they acquit for a little while or they change their direction for a moment and then the next time you look up at them, they're right back, right there where they were when they were struggling so bad to be free. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to proclaim, I'm going to even go so far as to say this, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me right now to tell you that that same Spirit is on you that's being pro- proclaimed in these passages. That, the, that it says of, of in, the, in the Scripture where it said, if it's that same Spirit that had the power to raise Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, it will quicken, it will make alive your mortal body and it's for those that you're going to come in contact with. The last thing this world needs, now don't let me forget to go back and finish that statement. The, the last thing this world needs is a, is a bunch of mean-spirited, critical people looking down our nose at them when we've been sent with an assignment from the heavens above that says that the Spirit of the Lord is on me. So he said to proclaim liberty to the captives. Y'all listen at that statement just for a moment. Have you ever walked uh, and seen people that were obviously strung out and, and you, you knew they needed help and whatnot? And, and if we're not careful, we, we'd pray and whisper a little prayer for them or, or perhaps we'd um, maybe go to the other side and, and, and fuss them and, and tell them, no, that's wrong, and how many times are you going to do this? And yeah, you are, no, you're not. Have we ever thought about the Scripture said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, has anointed you, and one of the things He said, because that this is one of the things that I want you to do, I want you to begin to proclaim liberty. Begin to prophesy. I wonder what difference it would make in our families and in our world that we walk in all the time. I wonder what difference it would make if we saw somebody that was strung out or something like that and began to speak over them freedom, began to speak over them liberty, began to speak over them deliverance, began to speak over them those things that God has come to do. And watch this, too. He's anointed us. Forgive me for yelling at you this morning, but if I tried to talk it, I'd blow up. He's anointed us. Oh, get this message today. That unless we get this message today, we're going to continue to sit in a church and warm up a seat. And hope they sing the song that we want. Thinking that when we get the feeling that we're desiring that that we've come to church and we've been to church and I've checked my box and I've done everything. Y'all, the church needs to get outside of these walls. There is a whole world of people that's waiting for somebody with an authority, with an assignment, with an anointing to be able to speak to bondage and watch it fall off. Begin to speak to that thing that's held you bound for so long and watch it fall asunder.
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want you to say it. I need you to say it to yourself. Somebody's waiting on you. Somebody's waiting on you. Somebody's depending on you. They might not even know you yet. I declare all the time that I'm going to pray for people that's going to get healed that aren't even sick yet. Why? Because there is an anointing that's been placed on our life for such. Come on, somebody. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Watch this. And the opening of prison, the prison to those who are bound. How many in this room knows somebody that's bound right now? How is it that we can accept the assignment that we have? How is it that we, 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 we read this and we think, boy, that Isaiah was a blessed man. Or perhaps we read the account of this in Luke where Jesus stood and said this. And I want you to notice something. I'm not going to take the time to turn there and read it. Go home and read it. Where Jesus was standing in the temple and he stood there and was reading. Whenever he got done reading, the Bible says, the, the, the account goes like this. And he closed the book. And he handed it back to the attendant. In other words, it, I got it. I, I, I got it. I, I heard what the prophet Isaiah said. I took it for myself. And then he left there and went straightway and started doing what exactly that he was said to do. Oh, that we would leave out of this room today. Come on, somebody. Oh, that we would leave up out of here today, not just have come to church, but we'd leave out of here with a renewed assignment on my life, the one that is completely uh, backed up by the Word of God, one that is uh, enforced by the Holy Ghost of God, one that is going to be brought to pass because of the infusion of an anointing of a surrendered life that pleases God with the ability to say, Here I am, Lord, send me. Send me. In my mind, I'm playing like y'all clapping. In my mind, I'm saying they're getting it, God. In my mind, see, here's, see, here's, here, can I go ahead and draw this line right here? I don't need you to clap for me. But there's one that deserves any amount of praise that we can give. It's not about me. If you walk out of here today and all you got was, boy, that brother Wes, huh? Then, that, then that's all you got. But if you walk out of here today with a praise in your heart and a song on your lips that our God has provided this for us. He's appointed me. Do y'all do y'all know how jealous I'd be if I looked around and God was using everybody but me? I don't think I could take it. So that's why I'm going to praise him. Okay, let me go a little further. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to conform, to comfort all who mourn. I'm going to come back to that part in a minute. Let me say this. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I don't get political in this pulpit. I never have. And I don't on purpose. It's not that I don't have thoughts about it. It's not that I don't study it a little bit. It's not that I don't have opinions. It's not that uh, I'm scared. 
it's, it's, it's none of those things. It's, this, this is sacred. And we need to handle it as such. But for just a moment, I'd like to say something. He said to proclaim an exceptional year. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In just a few months, I think our nation is going to make a decision that is more critical than any time in history. And we need to be in the position spiritually to have an effect on this election. Your opinion's not going to sway nothing. Your opinion's not going to change anything. What you post is not going to matter. The only thing that we have in our arsenal is that we have been appointed and anointed to do these things that I've been preaching about because there is a spirit of the Lord that's on us. It is the church that is going to make the difference in the outcome of our nation. Now, if you notice, I'm not, I'm not saying vote for who. I'm not saying not to vote for who. Because it doesn't matter who's in the White House. What's going to matter is does the church arise and stand, proclaim victory for our nation. God can use whomever that will listen to Him. And so as a pastor of a church that believes in the power of the Holy Ghost, believes in the infilling of the Spirit, believes that Isaiah 61 in, in Luke chapter 4, I believe it is, where Jesus stood and declared the Spirit of the Lord was upon Him. Church, if God Himself needs, if Jesus Himself needed God's direction in His life, His provision, Melissa, if you would come please, in His life, then we as a church need Him even the more. So, let me finish this out. What's cool is, is I'm just doing what's coming up in my spirit. Uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. How many knows that God keeps good records? To comfort all who mourn now watch this next verse. Look at verse 3. To console those who mourn in Zion. Who is Zion? We are. We know what that was speaking of, Israel. But Israel and the church are synonymous. Pastor, you mean, you mean there's crying up in this church? Oh, I'm convinced that, that many of you lay your heads on your pillow at night and tears of uncertainty begin to roll down your cheeks. There's been a few times that I can think of that I was overwhelmed by a situation or something or things. I didn't want my wife to see my tears. Because, 
How many of y'all know the difference in crying and ugly crying? Am I talking to anybody in here that's done any ugly crying? He said, to comfort them that mourn in Zion. If I don't do anything else today, I pray that the words of God that I've read and I've expanded on find you wherever you are. And if it's in the midst of a tear rolling down your cheek or it's ugly crying, We serve a God that knows where we are. He knows who we are. I'm not just trying to rhyme here. I'm just saying He knows why we are. And He's provided for us. He's provided a church that if I notice you're ugly crying, I'm coming to you. He's provided a church that if you're bound, you need to say, and I figured out I'm coming to you. Are y'all, are y'all getting this? Are you, are you seriously willing to put your hand on your chest and say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me? Because somebody even in Zion's, they ugly crying right now. They, they need somebody to say something to them, for them, with them. Pray for them, lift them, let them know, let you know that I'm thinking about you. And I'm not just thinking about you, but I've been appointed. I've been anointed. I, I've, I, I have something inside of me that whether you realize it or not, you need it. So when we leave out of here today, church, Let's leave out of here in the frame of mind that I'm going to take care of my brother. I'm going to take care of my sister. I'm going to try to forget about me for just a little while. I, 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 I don't know if I even should say this or not. I'm going to say it as, as honestly and gently and sincere as I can. I have no idea how many times that I've walked in a hospital room or that I've walked in a room, a bedroom, or I walked in uh, up to somebody in prayer and, and put my hand on them and began to pray for them. The whole, and every now and then that thought hit me, I wish somebody had their hand on my head. You see, that's, that's the value of what I'm talking about whenever we can get above our own self and begin to pray for somebody else. When I can forget about Wes for just a little while and let God use me with the anointing that's in me that He's placed there and the Spirit that's upon me that He placed there, if I can forget about me for just a little while, I can be the church. I want you to stand with me this morning. Shooting in the dark right here. Shooting in the dark right here, right now. But I believe I'm being led. Is everybody in the room, and if you're not, I don't know how you'd respond, just do like this, I don't know. Is everybody in the room in here all right with somebody placing their hand on your back? You all right with that? Is everybody, is anybody... Uh, phobia, you know, or germaphobe. And this is what I need you to do. Go ahead and gently place your hand on the back of the person that's in front of you or beside you. And I want you to say this and say it where they can hear you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open the, the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The all of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. What a beautiful prayer. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful prayer.